important to meet the candidates. This is a show hosted by Brockton Community Access to get everyone that's a voter in Brockton to know who the candidates are that are running for office. Today I have Gary Keith here, who's a candidate for Councilor at Large. Welcome, Gary. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for having me again, Mark. Um, you are running for Councilor at Large. That's a citywide position. Correct. All seven wards, all 28 mm -hmm. precincts. Mm -hmm. um, we'll let you tell the Gary Keith story, but I want to know before you do that, what you're hearing from the people when you're going on the doors and you're knocking on the doors? What are the issues that you're hearing about? And are they your issues? Are they the people's issues? What it's are you hearing? It's a combination of both, Mark. Um, you know, the main thing I'm hearing basically from a lot of people is uh, they, they talk about their streets. You know, uh, I hear that from almost everybody. And, um, but then a lot of people don't know who their ward councils are. So there's a lot of things that are going on there. You know, um, people want their taxes lowered. People want their water rates lowered. You know, they're waiting for some, they want to see some new f fresh business coming into the town. So, I mean, the, the, and those are my issues also, you know, at the same time. But the biggest question I have for everybody is that we all want the same thing. I mean, I don't think there's anyone running that doesn't want, you know, streets, lower taxes and everything else. The biggest problem, I think, is how are we going to pay for it? And that's the issue that no one is addressing, you know. Everyone talks about, you hear all the politicians, all the candidates saying, I want to fix the streets, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Where's the money? That's the biggest question. And I think that um, we need to be more responsible and, and look at the citizens of Brockton and tell them straight out, we all want those things, but we have to figure out how to get it done. Well, paying for it, you look at Brockton, mm -hmm. there are residents that pay taxes, right. and there are businesses that pay taxes. Correct. I've heard quite a bit that the businesses the business taxes are high. Mm -hmm. You and I have heard about tax increment financing Correct. to give businesses breaks to come here. Mm -hmm. That's a hot topic, okay? The chamber yeah. sends out all their members every year when they set the tax rate mm -hmm. to make sure the business taxes don't go up too Correct. high. The residents are allowed to be heard, but they're not an organized group like the chamber is. Right. So tax increment financing has come up. What do you think is reasonable, Gary, to give a business a tax break, to get them to come to Brockton? Now, you've sat on two different boards. You've mm -hmm. sat on the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board. Correct. So people have come before you for businesses. that Those boards don't give the tax breaks. Correct. That's a city council responsibility that you would have if you were elected. Correct. What do you think about that whole subject? Because I've heard, oh, it's too long. 20 years, it's a long time to give someone a break. Yeah. What are your thoughts? 20 years is too long to give somebody a break. And, and I'm not saying that there wouldn't be, it, first of all, all of it should be on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on what business is coming in here. You know, the pros and cons of both sides of the table. How many employees are they going to, you know, put to work here in the city of Brockton? You know, and that would all factor into how much of a tax incentive you're going to uh, receive. You've probably heard me say this plenty of times now on, on other forums. Our council, because sometimes they've acted out of, a, uh, out of desperation, it seems like to me, to where and they would negotiate with a company or a corporation or a developer coming into town, but they negotiated quickly out of a position of a weakness, okay, out of a desperation. Okay, me as a, um, as I saw my background for 21 years, I am a negotiator, okay? That's what I do and I do it better than anyone that, uh, I hate to blow my own horn on that, but I'm pretty good at it. Well, you're we running, so you're selling yourself. Correct. You blow your own horn all you want. Okay? <laughs> okay. But we need to stop negotiating from a position of weakness, and we need to start negotiating from a position of strength. We have 100,000 people in the city of Brockton that are, that are relying on who they elect as their council, and we need to put our best foot forward, and we need to come with a little bit of muscle behind us because guess what? We are the city of champions. Okay, and we need to act like we're the city of champions. We remember where we came from, we know who we are, we need to act like it, and that's the way we need to approach anybody that wants to come in and do business with us. I'm pro-business, as you know, from sitting on the planning board and the zoning board, but we cannot continue to hold the citizens of Brockton, the homeowners of Brockton, hostage 
why we let developers and everyone come in and get 20 years worth of tax incentives for nothing. Okay, so you were talking about experience 21 years as a negotiator. Yes. You have the slogan, which seems like a lot of other people have taken it this election season. <laughs> you've had th different slogans for different campaigns that you've run. Correct. Why do you put that up there, and what was the whole thought behind it? I'm curious. Well, when I started using that, uh, like you know, this is my fourth time running for the same position as of Councilor at Lodge. So even right there, you've had a lot of candidates that have ran for different positions. Ward, Councilor, you know, didn't make it. Councilor at Lodge, Mayor, whatever, jumping around. Uh, I, I call it getting in to fit in. I've stayed the course. Okay, this is my fourth time I ran in 2013, 15, 17, and now 19, but I ran for counselor at large. Right then and there, that I started learning what a counselor at large does. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I've learned how to run a campaign as from a counselor at large position. All that, gain, uh, I gained that experience right then and there on that, but I also took the four years on the planning board, four years on the zoning board, and again, experience matters. I took you know, my years on the, uh, in the military, mm -hmm. background in law enforcement, even living in Brockton for over 30 years and being married for 30, uh, 33 years together for 35, raising kids, all of that is experience, you know, that you gain from, uh, you know, I own my own business, Bostonian Security Corporation. And um, these are things that you, you know, you gain experience from. So I have life experiences, I have, uh, sitting on a government board experience, and, um, and I have campaign experience of running for council at large for, like I said, uh, the last four elections. And I took all that and I started using this slogan um, over the last two elections. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it seems like everyone's using it on this one here. And the thing is, is that uh, everyone kept telling me I have a, the best catchphrase there, experience matters. So I guess there's something behind it. Next time you're going to put a copyright or a trademark on That's it. That's it. Okay. So um, you served in the U.S. Army. Yes. That's uh, how long? Four years. Four years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this number four is a good, maybe a good number for you. Usually so they say so. third time's a charm. Maybe it's the fourth time maybe. around. And you, you did bring that up. What's different this time? about the election. What are you hearing? What are you experiencing? Have the issues changed or issues the people changed. changed? Or so so just tell me yeah, what your thoughts the are. The issues haven't changed, they have remained the same. The reason being again I, I believe is because of the fact that I don't believe we've gotten it right yet mm -hmm. as far as who we've elected as our council. Okay, so the issues have remained the same because I don't believe we've been getting the job done. And um but what I've been hearing right now, especially from even some of the other candidates, is that my name keeps coming up. When they're knocking on doors, my name keeps coming up. Um, and I think it's because of the fact that this is my fourth time running. You know, we have a very large city here, and to try to knock on all the doors of Brockton is very hard to do. Mm -hmm. So I made a little joke about it, and I said, you know, um, it takes about four years to canvas this whole city. You know, one year to canvas the east side, one for the west side. One, and yeah. um, I think I finally completed it. <laughs> well, it's a, it's definitely a big city. I, I ran citywide, and it was hard mm -hmm. to do that when you're working, Correct. you're working full time, right. and you're campaigning. Um, so this election is different in one sense, mm -hmm. where you have two, two. I'm not going to call it an open seat because right, everything's an open been. seat, but Correct. there are two councilors at large mm -hmm. that decided to run for something else. Correct. Robert Sullivan for mayor mm -hmm. and Gene Bradley Duran in court when he ran for mayor. Correct. So there's two seats that aren't filled by an incumbent, someone that's already elected, and there Correct. are two seats that are. Mm -hmm. uh, mayor Rodriguez is running for re-election to council at large. He right. chose not to run for mayor. Mm -hmm. He was running for a seat, and Wynn Farwell is running for for re-election re as well. Correct. So the council could be it's definitely going to be two new people. Correct. And then there are challenges in the different wards. So the right. council could conceivably turn over to new faces yes. with new races. There's mm -hmm. some councilors that haven't been challenged a lot, and now all of a sudden they have a challenge. Right. How do you think that will affect the business of the city? I think, it, I think it's definitely going to affect the, the business of the city because, like I said, what we've had hasn't been working, in my opinion, which is why, I'm, uh, again, I'm out here running. And I think that 
some of the, new, the candidates that are running right now, especially some of the new candidates, they want the same thing that I want. We want to see the city go further. I think that we were on, we were on the right track. There's a lot of things that are still coming down uh, the track that, that, that the late Mayor Carpenter um, accomplished, okay? And we're going to basically see it come to fruition. But we need to go further. We need to keep going. And I think that um, there's a lot of candidates that are running right now because they want the same thing and they feel the same way as, as I do, that it just hasn't been, the job just hasn't been getting done by the sitting council as it is. So like you said, this, there could be a lot of a new makeup in there, let's say, but um, I think that's gonna be good. And it's also gonna light a fire under uh, anyone that's get, that stays and, and gets reelected. Because for me, I'm not, I'm not, I don't wanna be a part of the, uh, you know, the, the, the boys club that we have up there right now, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I can work with anybody, but I'm coming there to represent the citizens of Brockton, and that's what comes first. So um, when you talk about transparency, when you talk about um, integrity, when you talk about keeping people totally informed, that's what Gary Keith is going to bring to the city council. And that means, and, and, I, and I mean that because you know something, it's the reason why I've been running, Mark. You know, I'm very passionate about that, you know, and you know, and no one needs to come to me and talk to me in private okay, to run something by me because what's said there can be said in front of anybody. You know, there shouldn't be any secrecy. So more public participation. Definitely. You know, people can't go to the council right. and talk. There's no hearing of visitors like there is at the school committee. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like the library board, I don't know how the planning board and the zoning board worked. Mm -hmm. Mostly the people that appeared before you, I would assume, were on an agenda, so they couldn't right. just talk, have public comment. Well, they did have, they, it was open to public comment. Everything that came up in front of us was open up to public comments, whether you were in favor or, or against. So, those are hearings. Now, True. It, it, the council. Would you mm -hmm. be in favor of something like public comment? Would you want would. the citizens of Brockton to I be would. able to be heard? I would, because that would, all, that would get them more engaged, okay? Um, whether it's for or against, it would get them more engaged and would also let us know more of what their, um, what their minds, where their mindset is at. But then at the same time, if they're engaged, that means they're gonna come to see what's going on, mm -hmm. which gives them a lot more of letting them see their government at work. You know, because they'll be right there in front of us. And, and then there won't be any he said or she said. They'll be right there and they'll be engaged. But I think it's our job still as the counselors to be able to get the word out as to what is actually going on, where are we at, and, and anything that just came up, whether they were there or not. And that's what I think we're, we're lacking here, which is why we're having a situation that we're having right now in our, in our government. Um, we need to be, we need to pass that information on to our citizens and they need to be informed constantly as to what's going on. I plan on bringing that to the city council. So you're talking communication. Mm -hmm. One way of communicating with the people is the media, mm -hmm. okay? We have a television station here. It's true. In the past, Mayor Carpenter, Different mayors have done a TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, council President Sullivan did a before the council show. Would you want to use television to get your word out? I would definitely want to use that because I see it happening and I like it when it's going on. But then all of a sudden it stops. Mm -hmm. See, this is, but that's what I'm talking about. You know, we can't do things when it comes down to an election cycle. We have to constantly keep the people informed by any means necessary. I would definitely be in favor of that. So the ward councilors have ward meetings, mm -hmm. which the councilors at large can all attend. Correct. If there are seven of them, you get seven meetings to attend, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I know Councilor Sullivan has done group meetings with the councilors at large. In the past, it was with the councilors and the school committee members and even mm -hmm. Southeastern. Would you favor something like that? Would you yeah. do your own town hall style meeting as a yes, councilor at large? Yes, I would. I would actually be, you would see so much of Gary Keith as a city councilor at everyone's event. I mean, it would, uh, it would be hard to keep me away because of the fact that, again, that's what I'm signing up for. I'm signing up to be visible. I'm signing up to be hands-on and um, and yes, I would definitely be for that. I am, like I said, it's just about the citizens. This is not about me. And if I can't fulfill what I'm saying, then I need to step off out of the race. You know, and I think that anyone that can't do that, if you have too much on your plate, 
You know what I mean? If you're if you're working and you're volunteering and you have everything going on to where, you know, I mean, you still have to juggle that that fine line of having a family and everything. All of our kids are grown. OK, our youngest is 20 years old now. And um, and we have grandkids. Yes, but all of our kids are grown. And it's time for me. I have the time to give back. OK, I have the time to be a part of, you know, uh, our city government and to give all that I need to give to make sure that I'm effective, you know. How important is it for everybody to work together and get along? There was friction in the past between mm -hmm. the mayor's office and the city council. Um, there's a little friction right at the moment over the, you know, issues you're talking about right before the election with budgets and transportation and stuff mm -hmm. like that. How important is it for people to work together? If you think about, um, I know you played sports right. back in the day. Correct. If you have a team, you have, let's say, a football, it's quarterback, mm -hmm. and you got to have all the players on the same page because if they're not, they're running down different parts of the field. I'm it's not true. a sports person, so you got to right. excuse me. But is it important for everyone to work together for the it's good of the city? It's very important. And you know, and on that on that note, you don't have to like each other, but we have to work together. Okay, when I'm elected, you don't have to invite me over to your house for your kid's birthday. I don't want to compromise my position as far as doing my job. But as far as what happens in City Hall, we have to bring a professionalism to that position, which means that we have to communicate. We have to be professional with what we're doing. And yes, everyone needs to be on the same page because if you're doing it for the right reasons, which is representing Brockton, then we should all get, get along. Like I said, we don't have to like each other. If you don't like me for whatever reason, you know, everybody doesn't get along. Everybody has, some people have personality conflicts. I personally can get along with anybody and I can work with everybody. And I let whatever the issues are, let's put it to the side because there's something bigger and better that we're trying to accomplish here. And I'm willing to work on that. So, okay. yes. Now you've said that we haven't gotten to where we need to get. Mm -hmm. What would you do differently if you get elected to be a city councilor than what people that are already serving or people that have served in the past haven't done? Well, actually, you just said it. The thing is, is that everyone needs to, start to get, be able to get along, okay? And like you said, for me, I would bridge a gap personally with each and every last one of my, uh, the councilors, okay, to where I would actually get to know each one of them one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, we would sit down and we would have a one-on-one -on -one talk the same way you and I are sitting here right now to where, and I would let them know exactly who Gary Keith is, what Gary Keith stands for, and that Gary Keith is approachable no matter what it is that they have to, that they're bringing across. So not only do I want the citizens to know that I'm approachable, but I need my councilmen, uh, fellow councilmen and women to know that I'm approachable. That's what I would bring to the table. Um, because it's about pushing this city forward. I think that Mayor Coppinger was doing a great job, okay? I think he was doing, people, everyone is not going to agree on everything, but I think he was doing a great job to where we have gone further under his administration than I've seen us go in the past 15, 20 years. But I also think that we could have been so much further along if the council had worked together without everyone having their own view of how things should be done. And when you have your own view of how things should be done, that means you have your own agenda. Mm -hmm. No one here can get anything passed on the council with their own agenda. If you don't get the majority to agree with anything that you're trying to do, it doesn't work. So we need the team to work. To make the dream work, the team needs to work. Do you have anything specific that you'd like to get accomplished as a council at large to move things forward. You mentioned um, before about, um, like for instance, economic development and stuff yes. like that. The councils at large, in my opinion, are unique because they run citywide. Mm -hmm. They don't represent one corner of the city, they represent all corners of the city, just like the mayor does. True. But one's the legislative body, the council, and one's mm -hmm. the executive. Right. So anything specific that you've talked about during well, this campaign? Again, you know I'm all about uh, the economic development and there are some things even without the title of a city councilor. Um, there are some things that I'm actually working on right now because I think that if I'm elected, I think that we might be able to, uh, it, it's a great, some great ideas. Um, 
But I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that I've been saying along the ways, and I've heard everyone else come up with them after I speak about them. So, but I do have some great ideas, Mark. Um, and if I'm elected, I think that all the rest of the councilors, when I bring it to them, will jump on it. And if I'm not elected, I'm going to have to bring it to them anyway, because I believe that it's something to where there are some things that I think will automatically make Brockton put us right back on the map again, put us right back in the game, okay, that I have going um, in mind. I think it's good for the South Side. You know, I think that we need to focus a little bit on our South Side. We need to be able to spread this this out. I know we have a lot of emphasis going on to our downtown area, which I agree with. But at the same time, we need to also still keep in mind that we do have four other sides of this city and um, and we got to get it up and going. So there are different parcels in the city and you're yes. probably familiar with this. The south side where that whole plaza is, that's private property. Mm -hmm. The fairgrounds, that's private, private property. property. The CSX rail yard, that's public government property. Mm -hmm. The city has an interest too. We have a lot of focus in downtown talking about um, relocating Mainspring, right. Father Bills. Mm -hmm. What would you do with something like that? I've been trying to get this answered from different people because I've heard that the economic development of downtown with all the new buildings and everything is being hindered or dampered because that's there. Correct. Where would you put Everybody's like, not in my backyard. I don't want to put it in my backyard. They tore mm. down Tent City. True. I don't know if that's a location. I don't know if the south side's a location. What would you do? You know, I've heard with the CXS, CSX, the, the old tent city, like yeah. you were talking about, believe it or not, I believe that we should be able to develop that for Father Bills or, or something else. The reason being is that there, a lot of the um, our transients were, were, were there anyway, mm -hmm. okay? And um, it's big enough. We can actually make that, I mean, I know there's a lot of ideas that people are coming up with for that area, but it's also large enough to where we can do more than one, one uh, project there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if we were to come up with a good idea like that, I think Father Bills would, would go ahead and jump on board and uh, with our help from the city, relocate. Because as long as we can make this city accessible to everyone else of, of things that we want to do downtown, it's going to benefit father bills also at the same time um, we still have to treat it with compassion you know um, because homelessness in our city is a concern of mine it's, it's a big concern of mine I mean um, I have compassion for what people are going through you know I know that uh, some people are, are homeless due to a financial situation some people are homeless due to a drug situation but you know no one ever said they were going to grow up to be homeless you know, because of all drug addicted and stuff. And I think that uh, we still have to have compassion, you know, why we try to do what we're doing. And uh, it's a slippery slope, but we, you know, we need the right people in place that are going to handle it. You know, it's, it's sometimes you have to look at it as tough love, mm -hmm. you know, but you can't just act like it doesn't exist. You need the services to go around with it you too. Need, you need the exactly. mental health services, the job right. training services. And all right of now, that. I don't think that, the, I don't, in my opinion, and I'm gonna call it as it is, I don't see the the people in at Father Bill's getting the services that they need. I really don't. And I think that needs to be addressed also. Okay, public safety, new police station, new fire station. The CSX was another place people were talking about for police. Correct. Fire, I've heard the other part of Brock, the old Brockton High School where mm -hmm. the champion school is. So a lot to deal with. Look at, I just got the five minute cue, believe it or sure. not, we've gone 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I wanna make sure that I let you do a couple of things. Tell sure. people who Gary Keith are mm -hmm. is, uh, what you stand for and give them your contact information so you can address the audience directly okay. and then if we have any time left, I'll ask you one more question and we'll close okay. the show. Well, I'm Gary Keith Sr. I'm a 30 year resident here in the city, of thir over 30 year resident here in the city of Brockton. Married to my wife Kathy for 33 years and uh, we raised our seven children here in the city of Brockton. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I am a, uh, I sat on the planning board and the zoning board for four years each. I sat on as a chairperson for the state of Massachusetts for our Head Start program and for the local area here for Head Start also. 
Um, this is my fourth time running, folks, for uh, Council at Large. I have never given up on Brockton, and again, I'm asking you to not give up on me. Why? Because experience does matter, and I'm learning. I've learned a lot as I've gone uh, as, along the way. But I'm doing this for no other reason than we need someone that really cares. We need someone that has walked the walk, someone that is, is talking the talk. That's going to be me, and that is me. And I want to be your city councilor at large because what we've had has not been working. I know it, and you know it. We need to make some changes right this year. With, there's going to be some changes this year. I'm just asking you to let me be that change. Let me have that seat at the table so that I can represent us. That's who Gary Keith is, and I will not let you down. Okay, Gary, um, I still have three. Just your phone number, your website, sure. any information you want to give to the voters that they can look at before Tuesday's election yes. to find out. Well, my website is uh, on Facebook, okay, and uh, Gary Key for City Council, Gary Key Senior for City Councilor at Large on Facebook. Um, my name is going to be the sixth name on the ballot on November 5th, and my contact number, you can reach me at 774-257-3827 or at gman, G-M-A-N, 02301, at yahoo.com. I like the email. That's pretty cool. G-Man. You. Yes. you know, people, you got to have a gimmick when you're running for office so people <laughs> can find you and, and look you up and everything like that. Um, is there anything that's come up during the campaign at all? Um, kind of get about a minute, and mm -hmm. then I'll close out and say goodbye and sure. tell people to vote, that you want to correct or anything that people have said about you or anything that you want to put on the record before? Would well, there's been a lot of things said about me, uh, good and bad. But the thing, the main thing I want to just say is that, you know, we have a lot of candidates that are aligning themselves uh, with each other and calling themselves the black candidate, the white candidate, the, uh, the female candidate, the Haitian candidate, the, uh, the Cape Verdean candidate, you know, trying to represent a certain race or a certain group. But with Gary Keith, there are no groups and there's only one race and it's called the human race. And I wanna represent each and every last one of us because that's who I am. I have the compassion and the love for each and every last one of us here in Brockton. And I wanna be your next city council at large. Good closing, good to see you. Thank you. Um, November 5th, very important day. Yes, it is. Everybody gotta get out, do their civic duty. Uh, Brockton, don't disappoint us. We need more than 25% or 30%. It would be great to get 50 or 60% or even great. more like that. So do your civic duty. People fought and died for your right to go out and vote. Veterans um, and generations before us. Make sure you keep educated. Watch Brockton Community Access, our three channels. And we'll see you here on election night. And let's all hope the weather's good. Thanks for being on, Gary. Thank you very good. Thank you very much. Watching Mark. Meet the Candidates, and we will have more candidates and more coverage for you on Brockton Community Access. Thanks for joining us.